All right. This is the HD28 that I did a video on, and it's got a lot of things to get done. So the first thing I'm going to do today uh, is do the tuners, uh, pop the nut off of it. It's going to get it burned out, and I'm going to probably go ahead and take the bridge off because the location is off on that. So first thing i got to do is get the strings off. And everybody's got their way of wrapping strings. <laughs> and this guitar, if you recall, has a pretty worn bridge plate, pretty worn pins. I can't, I can't get the pins out. When you can't, when you can't pull the pins out like that, that means that the ball end is jammed up in between the pin and the bridge pad and you can't pull it out. And that one came out, but like these, yeah, won't work. So the way you gotta do this is you gotta push the pin back in very carefully, push the string down, and then you can pull the pin out. Now, the way to really do this is to fix it. So I'm gonna push the string down, pin comes out. That to me is a guaranteed thing that these pins are bent and jammed. These pins are terrible. You know, here's what I do. <laughs> I don't have time to mess with the various little wraps and people, people tie their strings in knots up in the headstock and all kinds of stuff. And you know, you ought to look at my string changing video. Put one wrap on top, one wrap on the bottom. Makes it really easy to get the strings off. These are jammed. Oh, this is jammed pretty bad. <laughs> I can't even get the strings to go down. So, now, okay, you so see, you watched me do this, right? This is a pair of angle cut pliers. A lot of people are horrified that you're prying off of the saddle here. Why don't you pry from the back of the bridge? Why don't you pry from anywhere? If you pry from the back of the bridge, uh, you will put dents in the wood. Which is harder, ebony or bone? Do you have ebony saddles? No. Well, you can, but they don't last very long. You have bone shadows. You're way better bending, uh, prying off of the bone than you are the ebony. Besides all that, you're really not prying. All you're doing is getting down here at the bottom, kind of giving it a little pop. It's really not even any prying at all. It's a very easy, gentle prying. Here, this one's coming out. There we go. Got that one. So these are really bad. These two. I don't know how you'd ever change strings. Don't work them out. Get rid of these strings. <laughs> ah, if you have fingernails, perhaps you can use your fingernails, but my fingernails are not. Boy, that one's bad. Really bad bend. Bent. Got a big dent in it. That dent's causing half the problem. See, it doesn't go in smooth. Okay, got that out. Throw these strings away. Get back. Told you, I'd be back. Put my tools up here. You know, one of the most handiest things I have is a magnetic tool bar right here. Man, you can just throw your string, your tools up there, and they stick. Alrighty. Take the customer's pins, even though these are junk plastic pins that nobody wants. Gotta save them. Cute little plastic bag. You know how to open plastic bags? You don't start trying to open it from the top up here. You know, it's too hard to split. Take your fingers like that and smear it sideways. And ta-da! It's open. Fiddleman showed me that. It's a way to open plastic bags. Okay. These pins. I'll just drop them in here. They'll make it into the case eventually. Alright, here's his Waverly's he's gonna get. He's gonna get gold Waverly's. These are expensive. But YOLO. You only live once. You might as well get the tuners you want. Okay, just set those waverlies right there for a second because I'm going to show you. Well, let's do the waverlies. 
Okay. You've got on this guitar, you've got Grovers, Rotomatics. Got to get them off. The way I get them off is with a 10 millimeter. Use my little quarter screwdriver here, give it a little twist to get it going. Zip! Here it comes. Now, when you do the a conversion from Rotomatics to anything else, there's going to be raccoon eyes under here that you got to deal with. So we're going to take a look at it and see what we got here. That last one doesn't want to come off right now. I'm just going to flip the guitar. Any base. This. Your number one. Phillips. Ah, oh, here we go. Number one Phillips. Number one Phillips. Magnetic two holder. Like that. Same deal. Come in here. Kind of give it a twist to get started. Comes. The screws are rusted, that's interesting. The screws are not normally rusted. So, hmm, maybe a lot of humidity, I don't know. Just interesting. Uh -uh. There's a few divers over there. There's all the tuners. Got me a little plastic bag. Put these tuners in here. Now, God, these are heavy. Rotomax weigh approximately twice what way would he's weigh? And so some people are like, oh, well, that's only six ounces, you know? Well, yeah, it is, but you know, don't forget it's on the edge of a, it's on the end of a two foot long stick here. And there's a thing called leverage, and the more weight you have out here, it compounded by the leverage. Like this guitar, <laughs> wow, without the Rotomax at all, man, it's light. Um, and the balance is down here, the neck is really super light now. That will, removing weight off of the headstock is going to stiffen the neck, you know. Um, the way that works is just, uh, if you shoot archery, you know this. You can take a 500 spine arrow and you can put an 85 grain tip on it and it's going to be stiffer than it will if you put a 150 grain tip on it. That leverage weight at the end of that leverage thing makes the spine, uh, I'm not sure what the, what the term would be, what the engineering term for it is. It makes the spine change. If you got no weight at all on the arrow, it's very stiff. You put 150 grain on it, you can sit there like that and flop it back and forth. Same principle with the guitar neck. You got a lot of weight out here in the headstock. <clears throat> Makes that neck more limber. You got no weight at all on there, it's just a very stiff neck right now. So that's really the advantage of changing to a lighter trainer. It changes the balance of the guitar and puts it more down here than out here. Your neck's not falling over all the time like this. So it changes that balance, puts it more in your gut, and makes that neck a little bit stiffer, which theoretically, hypothetically, would transfer more vibrations to the body of the guitar. So if the vibrations are getting sucked up or held captive down here, they're not going to make it to the body. Now what that will do though, more vibrations up here, or more weight, up in the headstock will increase the sustain because the energy is um, muted. It's kind of like kind of like a um, compressor. Uh, if you've ever used a compressor on an electric guitar, it keeps your your highs down, and so it makes a more even, smooth sound. And I think the same sort of thing happens here when you put a lot of weight up on the headstock. It takes that vibrations and it evens out the spikes so that you get a nice smooth sound 
you get the illusion of increased sustain. But I'm willing to bet that if you put everything onto a, um, a oscilograph or a oscilloscope, checked it out, that you would find that all it did was mute the highs, kind of like a compressor would do. Okay? So when you lighten this up and you make the neck stiffer and you get more vibrations here and the whole guitar is just lighter, it's punchier. You get bam, you get a, 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 a spike to the sound and then it'll drop down into the decay. So anyway, it's just a lot of that's just hypothetical, theoretical, possibility stuff that you would probably need to test with a whole laboratory full of equipment. But I guarantee you, there's no question that changing the lighter tuners will change the balance in the guitar. Because I can feel it right now. There's no, there's no weight on that headstock at all. It's nice. The weight's all here in the body. Okay, tuners are off. Now, let's take a look at these eyes. And these are not too bad. These are going to polish out nice. What I'm looking for is the amount of dent. Haha. <laughs> Don't do this at home, kids. I'm looking for the amount of dents around the circles right here. I'm not so concerned about the difference in color because that will fade out surprisingly quick. And I also tend to use round grommets, round grommets instead of hex grommets because the round looks a lot nicer when you have a round circle. When you use a hex grommet, it really makes the round shape kind of pop out use round grommet and it's surprising how to fool your eye but anyway what i'm looking at right here is the little dents i want to see how bad those dents are because i'm going to polish those out i'm going to smooth them out with some sandpaper and i'll show you all that and these are pretty good i bet you those are going to come out really nicely so okay let's take the bridge off and then i'm going to um move over here and reset the camera and everything and I'll show you how I polish up those raccoon eyes. That might even be a completely different video, you know, to keep your running length. So here's my magic stick here. Set it on the 12th fret and, uh, you know, it's off by an eighth of an inch. So the bridge is going to have to come back. Something's going to have to come back anyways. Here's my stick. This end here goes at the middle of the 12th fret. I've had the guys send me pictures like this, and they've got it here on the fret board. No, no, it goes on the fret t because you don't, the, the string doesn't stop on the fingerboard. The string stops on the fret, and that's where the intonation occurs. You know, follow? I could cut this, cut this neck off right here, make a super short little neck and that would be a stiff neck and uh, and i don't care what happens from here to here really well i do a little bit because it could be off here but what i really care about right now is the distance from the middle of the 12th fret to the middle of the saddle the contact points okay so i get my little measuring stick and like i said this is about an eighth of an inch off which is not surprising a second check that i can do if i want to is put it right here at the body and I'm gonna hold my finger up there and that bridge ought to be yeah that bridge ought to be 11 and 1 8 of an inch from the edge of the body to the front edge of the bridge and this one is 11 inches so that's an eighth of an inch off same thing over here right actually it's a little worse here your bridge is on a little bit crooked here let me check that yeah the bridge is on crooked that's not uncommon. It's back. Here's the thing. Here's, if the bridge is on crooked so that the base side is back farther, then that would help us here. It's actually the other way around. The base side is closer. And so we're getting hit twice here. Bridge has got to come off. Got to be skewed back. Or well, some other thing has got to happen, you know. So here's my template. Lay that down. I got some second shields that go up here. This one's straight, it goes on the front. This one's got a little bit of a bridge cut out, it goes on the back. And that's just a secondary shield. Might as well take the saddle out. 
we're going to have roast saddle. Uh-huh. Saddle is so short. There it is. Got it out. And what do we have here? <laughs> Brass shim. Uh, that's a surprise. You always find all kinds of fun things in here. A very poor fitting brass shim. Look at that, I can't even pull it out. And it's just wrinkled, so it never did fit well. There we go. I'm going to bust the thing out. Well, brass shim. You know, I honestly really don't have a problem with shims, but it should fit. <laughs> and if I was going to run a shim, I would use a piece of ebony or a piece of uh, fancy rosewood, you know, something that from a bridge cut off, a uh, Amazon rosewood, Madagascar, or even Brazilian rosewood, whatever, and then super glue it to the saddle, make it fit really nice. Uh, then, I, you know, I really don't have a problem with using a shim for some purposes, if the slot is deep enough, but this one's okay, but anyway, that was interesting. You never know what you're going to find in there sometimes. So I'll get this thing fitting good. Here's my heat lamp. You see my little chains here? This is neat. I got this uh, little kitty chain hanging there. It's great for this. Here's my heat lamp. Hardware uh, feed store. Chicken brooder lamp with a 250 watt light bulb in it. Set it on here. And I want it about right here. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Okay. And what about that much distance in here? Turn the light on. Cook it. No, this is going to be boring. This is where you sit and watch. But let's just do this live so you can see about how much time it takes and all that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I take the time kind of clean up my messy workbench a little bit here. I don't know whose pins these are. These are some bent black pins. This is when you clean your workbench up. Reorganize stuff. There are some tricks here. Let's talk about for a minute while this is doing this. Let's talk about how to take the bridge off. A couple of ways to take a bridge off. One way is a spatula. Like that. That's a Stumac spatula. I don't particularly like this spatula. This is a new spatula. And, you know, I spend money on tools every now and then because they're tax deductions. And I, I don't know why I don't like this one. I just don't like it. I don't like the angle of it or something. Something I don't like about it yet. I normally use... Dudes. These? These were also from Stumac a long time ago. And these are thinner. They've been used a lot. And these go in easier. However, I don't really use spatulas. I use hammer and chisel one inch chisel and I'll explain that why as we do this but when you use a spatula sometimes you can get under the grain and you'll peel a lot of wood off of the grain plus when you're pushing back here on the back of the finish you can smush the back of the finish and you can put tape and you can do all this but then the tape is going to be up in the way and you're going to have to go over the piece of tape and down into the bridge so I tend to not use spatulas but that is one way to do it I use a chisel and I'll show you why as we do this. I've had better luck. Now, I can smell it, so I'm going to take a look here. These are cardboard templates, sharp as humidified, and this cardboard will absorb moisture. The heat will drive that moisture out. So every so often when you get started, you need to take them off and make sure there's not humidity building up under here because there will be at some point. 
you also just need to take a look at it. <laughs> you know, you don't want to get too cocky and throw this thing on there and say, oh, five minutes, you know. No, no, don't ever do that. I'm up a little higher this time. That's all right. That's all right. I scoot the guitar around to heat the various edges of the, of the bridge. Some people like to use a heat blanket, a uh, heat pad, whatever. I don't really like to do that because I don't want to heat directly on the bridge. Um, I've had, you know, the scorches more. I just like this better. You know, I'm cautious about using, I've got metal, metal calls. I've got metal calls like this that I use for taking bridge plates out. And I just, you know, you can't get an even heating surface here. The bridge is curved, this is going to sit here, it's just not going to make a nice even heating surface. You end up heating one point more than the other point. That doesn't happen with the heat lamp. With the heat lamp, you get a nice, even heat over the whole thing. So, just watching this bridge. Some bridges will smoke a little bit. Mm, that's what happens. That's the oils and the things in the bridges. You know, you play and you get oil from the palm of your hand. Uh, Rosewood bridges will have oil in them. You'll eat some of that oil out. It'll smoke a little bit. You can clean that up later. Just want to watch it. All right. Take a couple minutes. This bridge was stuck on pretty good, you know. It wasn't in danger of uh, falling off. If the bridge is loose or falling off, it makes your job a lot easier. So again, I'm going to take a look at this because I shifted to a different part of the cardboard template. I'm going to turn my heat lamp off to set it up there and come in here and take a look at it. Feel the bridge. It's heating up. Oh. Down again. That's too bad. I like that. Okay. Sometimes I'll get my mandolin off the wall and practice it, that kind of thing, but when I do that, it'll start smoking, so maybe I'll get my mandolin and tune it for you. Now that my bridge is, now that my uh, desk is all nice and clean, nothing to do.
try to focus on this. But that's good. That's a tune I don't know very well. I haven't practiced it in a while. Fisher's one pipe. You need to get it in your subconscious where you can focus on something else and still play it. Got a little heat there. Looking good. Let's do a chest shot on it. Whew. My eyes are focused back on this. Okay. Let's get the tuners out of the way. So this is a one inch chisel. Nothing fancy about it. Just a hardware store. In fact, it is a great neck. Oh, a three quarter inch chisel. Whatever. I have another inch. No, three quarter inch. Okay hammer and I'm just going to come in here lay it almost flat I like the chisel better because I can put it right up on the on the interface of the bridge and top and I can gauge how much how loose the glue is you know if it starts coming up real if it starts coming up real easy then I've got enough heat and with the spatula you can wedge it in there and make it come off and I don't like that Sounds nice and warm, but this sounds still cool. You can put a little water under there, but not yet. I don't like to get the water in there too early because it'll cause it'll cause steam, which is a good thing. But the steam can go to the outer uh, if you have to if you do it too early. When you put water under it now and continue to heat, it'll steam too much and it can cause ripples and stuff in the finish, which I don't like. So I, I will only use the water. When I think I'm getting close to the end, just to kind of help it pop off a little bit. So it's not quite ready yet. I'm going to heat it some more. Heat this corner a little bit more. Hmm. Now I guess you need to heat it for about like one or two Fisher's horn pipes. However <laughs> long that is, you know. this was going to be boring. I see some smoke coming up. That's good. Let's go back over here. Heat that just a little longer. Take a look at it. Okay. Top's still doing good. Top's not hot. Let's see if it wants to come up yet. Chisel. Set it up there. Yeah.
here it comes. It's starting to move. When the bridge wants to come off, you'll tap on it and you'll see it kind of come up pretty readily. Not forcing it, I'm just tapping it. It's got to want to come up on its own. Now, paying attention, you can see that I use nothing but heat in here. What do you think happens when you keep your guitar on a hot car? And uh, especially if it's humid. If you guys are the back east or something, you got a humid day, hot. Leave your guitar in the car under tension. Bad news, buddy. That's how I take your guitar apart is with heat and humidity. I'm going to go to the other side here, see how it's doing. You never want to take anything off in one direction. You're always going to come out in the other way. When I do a pick guard, I go all the way around the edges of the pick guard. Don't try to work off the whole way. You can hear the pitch change. Front edge is still stuck pretty good. So I'm going to probably apply a little bit of heat to the front of that, of that edge. So here's your spatula. Here's your spatula. I'm going to dip it in water. Just because I told you it was getting close to the edge. And the spatula will go under, but I don't want to, you know, I don't know if I'm catching grain. I don't like that. I'm just kind of getting a feel for how loose it might be. It's pretty loose in the middle, but the edges are still kind of tight. So, wipe that water up. More heat. Gotta be patient. Okay, I'm going to work the forward edge, a little bit more heat on the forward edge now, right there. Uh, a lot of times this is when I check my emails and stuff, but.
finish it good. Big gap now, it's coming off. That side looks real good. Okay, back to the front. There we go. That opened up a big hole. Looks good, a little more heat right there. And then it's gonna come off. Right there. You know, I'm always careful to kind of bounce out a little bit before I let go of it. Gotta make sure everything's fastened correctly. I'm gonna move that guitar right there. Focus a little bit of heat, heat right on that corner. And it should come off then. Ugh. Mm, a strap. All right, I gotta plug it in. Came out real easy. All right, bridge is really coming off now. Now, what I want to see, I'm going to pry up pry my finger and I'll see if there's any wood hanging up there. And there is a little bit of wood. Now this is where I'm going to use the spatula. Your grant, your wood has a run out, and you'll catch a piece of that run out, pull it up. I don't want to do that. So I, I peek up underneath there and find out what's clear and what's not clear. This point, I use a spatula and some water, and see that's clear now. Spatula's coming all the way through, coming all the way through. It's hanging up right there. A little bit of water. I'm gonna look up there and see what it's doing. Actually, it's coming off. So, ease it up in there. It's hanging up right there. Just kind of work it through. And, I'm getting a rush here. And there it is. A little bit of piece of scrap. There we go. 
Okay, and there's your bridge off. Now you always, sometimes they come off really super clean, sometimes they got a little bit of wood hanging on them. So let's take a good honest look at this one, see what we got. Uh, and we've got a little bit of spruce up in here. This is the corn I was having trouble with, you see. So it caught a little bit of run out or something, something wanted to hang up there. The rest of it is pretty clean. There's a little bit of a piece right there, and I will splice that off. Right there. No, that's not it. There it is, right there. So I will go ahead and get a another spatula, put some water on it now while it's nice and hot. And I'm gonna get this splinter off of there. That, take my thumb, find this little happy home right there, and splash it back in. Okay, let it sit there for a second. Uh, the rest of this is not bad. This stuff here is real thin. It looks terrible, <laughs> but it's not. This is pretty clean. Got a little bit over here. I could take a look and see if that'll come off. If it doesn't, I'm not going to worry about it because I am going to have to scoot this bridge back. And that's just real thin. One small little micro layer. So this bridge came off pretty clean for having been on there for 40 years. I take it and I'm going to clamp it to my workbench here to get it flat again. Just in case it got twisted or warped or something like that. And I was taking it off. I'm going to clamp it to the workbench and leave it for a while. Now what I really want to see, since this bridge is going to have to scoot back, I want to see what the forward edge of this looks like. So what I'm looking at is this edge right here. Oh, and let me put this, let me get a little glue on that before I forget. I'm going to use fish glue. Scoot that little thing out of the way. Put a dab of fish glue down. You could use almost any glue you wanted, but I, I like fish glue. It's pretty strong stuff. Put that little thing back over. Yeah. Press it in. Good. I'll clamp it in a minute. But what I want to see, I've got these little clamps that look like this, they're just little scrap pieces of wood, and they've got a Teflon piece on the back. Um, and that's really nice because the glue won't stick to that. And I will put it down like this and clamp it down there in just a second. What I want to see for now is what this forward edge looks like right here. Because that's where I'm going to have to scoot the bridge back. And just to show you, Here's a 70s bridge. That one's clamped to the table. It's going to have to go back an eighth of an inch. Which is... About that much. Okay. This one actually looks pretty good. And I'll tell you why. Because that's an ebony bridge and ebony tends to stain. And what happens is you end up with a with a with a really black, dirty stain right up in here. But this one is pretty nice. It's almost the same color as the rest of it. But I've got a little piece of ebony right here, a little piece of ebony right there. That's not a big deal. And I think I'm going to be able to make that scar um, pretty clear. It's going to look good. So I'm going to get me another chisel right now. A little half inch chisel. And I'm going to come in here and just pry that little piece of ebony off of there. Very carefully. But it's still warm. Glue's still good. I'm going to come up and clean this edge up. Right there. Just scraping it backwards a little. If you come in this way. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this is going to clean up real nice. 
That's what it's going to look like. And I'll go through the whole process of this too. In a minute. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to move this guitar over here. Right, first, I'm going to clamp that. I'm going to clamp it and I'm going to go eat lunch. I'm going to clamp that down. Put a clamp in there. Anybody else needs to get clamped down? Yeah, you know. Slide a little glue into this one too. This is that feathered edge that was on the bridge. And we're just going to push a little glue into there. With my finger. Might as well just clamp all those, you know, what I'm going in to eat. There we go. A couple more. Right about there. That one's too big, I need a smaller one. Smaller clamp, smaller clamp, smaller clamp, smaller clamp. This will work. Clamps always want to slide on you when you're tightening, so you got to stick your finger down there and hold that down. Clamp it down. Hold it down with my finger. It takes a lot of dexterity to do this. I think that's why man limb pragging is good, because it keeps the dexterity up in your fingers. So it's tax deduction. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone, I'm gonna go eat lunch.